Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Cindy Curran from Enlightenment Now, a YouTube channel for spiritual and personal awakening. I am a spiritual life coach, and today's topic is narcissistic personality disorder. I will actually be doing a, a three-part series on this topic. The first one, this one right now, is going to be what is narcissistic personality disorder and why I chose that subject. The second one is going to be a woman who was married to somebody with a narcissistic personality uh, who had that disorder and how she got through it and how painful it was and how she turned her life around and got onto the other side into a life of happiness and service to others. And the third one is um, a man. Men are abused too. Men don't like to come forward to it because they think they'll be whippy, wimpy. They're less of a man or whatever society says, what they think their friends will say, that they're weak as a man or what society says, I'm not sure. But um, men are can be abused too and it's a really important thing to get out there and let men say hey you know I I'm being hurt and, and it's okay you're not weak you're not less than a man it's important to say if I have my way I'll have a couple of men or a few men come forward with this I have to see how that plays out, but I'm hoping. And this three part series is called The Many Faces of Narcissism. So without further ado, let me get into what narcissism is. I actually Googled it. It's so intricate. So I Googled it and I concised all the information into one or consolidated all the information into one. And I wrote it down. So please pardon um, me uh, looking down at my paper that I lost. Oh, I got it right here. Sorry. And um, what it is, is um, narcissistic person that disorder is one of several types of personality disorders. People with this disorder may come across as conceited, boast, boastful, or pretentious. They often want to be the center of attention, and that is so true in the NARC in my life. Uh, NARC is uh, short for narcissism. And often they dominate the conversation, but deep down they are profoundly insecure. And to make themselves feel superior, to overcompensate for their deep sense of insecurity, they develop a false sense of self-importance. They uh, put people down. They may emotionally, physically, um, mentally, maybe even sexually abuse somebody, anything to put them, put others beneath them in their eyes anyway. And uh, they take advantage of others to get what they want. And even if it does mean using physical, emotional, and mental abuse. People with narcissistic personality disorder are unable to love on a deeper level. They lack empathy. Oh, they are not in interested in the feelings of others because they lack empathy, but they can make you think that they care about you, but this is just a way of dominance, of dominating you and controlling you. Everything is about power and control. They have to have power, and that's where the abuse comes in. All that is is a, a power trip just dominating somebody and somehow by hurting others it's like um it gives them power it, it gives them i always think of it as the relative who abused me she it was like her kryptonite somehow it made her stronger hurting me and um, i know there were others but i won't speak for them i'm just going to keep this uh what was done to me and um, I'm also going to read something off the internet that gives people an idea of, um, of the signs and symptoms of um, narcissistic personality disorder. And again, I'm doing this and I'm not doing it from memory because there's so much involved. I could probably go on for a couple of hours. So I'm just going to read something off of a website. It's called Psych Central. And um, on this, there's, a, there's their definition is narcissistic personality disorder is a disorder that is character, characterized by a long-standing pattern of grand, grandiosity. 
grandiosity. I think I said that right. Either in fantasy or actual behavior. An overwhelming need for admiration and usually a complete lack of empathy towards others. People with this disorder can believe they are of primary importance in everybody's life or to anyone they meet. And here it is, uh, and it goes on to say, uh, yeah, th that may be appropriate for a king in the 16th century England, but is generally considered inappropriate for most ordinary uh, people today. And um, they give you um, symptoms of somebody who has a narcissistic personality disorder. And it goes on to say, uh, they have a grandiose sense of self-importance. They exaggerate achievements and talents, expects to be recognized as superior without consummate um, achievements. They are anarchists preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Knox believe he or she is special and unique and can only be understood or should associate with special or high status people. People who have narcissistic personality, they want to hang around with doctors, lawyers, celebrities, because they feel that if they are associated with these people, then they too are important. And they might even be those people. They might be a doctor, a lawyer, or, or a celebrity because they need that admiration. I remember with the knock one time, uh, the knock in my life, one time we were at a wedding and I saw her just kind of like nonchalantly look in her pocket and she just nonchalantly dropped some money on the floor. And, um, and she just was like looking around like nothing. And somebody of course sees it and says, Oh, look, you dropped some money. And she's like, Oh my God, I didn't even realize I dropped that money. Oh my God, how silly of me. And, the, and other people gathered around. They're like, Oh, must be nice to be rich. It must be nice to be able to drop money on the floor and, and not realize it. I was told it was a hundred dollar bill. So, you know, so there it is. And it was clearly, she clearly put her hand in the pocket and drop the money on the floor. There was no, um, she wouldn't take anything else out of her pocket. And I think sometimes she was looking at me, so I think she kind of did it on purpose. But anyway, so they require excessive admiration. And that goes into like how they wanna dominate conversations and stuff because they are the center, the center of attention. And sometimes it even means lying about their accomplishments and achievements, even though they have nothing to show for it. Um, they have a strong sense of entitlement, unreasonable expectations of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance with his or hers expectations. They expect, they expect to be treated like gold. They expect people to think of them as grand, as somebody special, as somebody per, uh, superior. And if they're not, they put you down. That way they, in their head anyway, can see, others can see that they're better in their mind, that they're better. Uh, let's see. Uh, knock is exploitive of others. They take advantage of others to achieve his or her own needs. They use people, basically. I don't think I have to get uh, into that, but they use people. And when they're done using them, they, that person is no longer useful to them. So they're dumped like a hot potato. I don't know if this is true in 100% of the narcs, but it's certainly true of the narcs that I know. They lack empathy, unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. And with the narc in my life, and this is uh, because I was a victim of somebody with a narcissistic personality disorder. Now it was undiagnosed or it is undiagnosed. I'm saying my relative has this disorder because everything I went through, talking to other people, being part of face group books that have um, about uh, helping people with narcissistic personality disorder or victims of, of that disorder, uh, they... Um, 
yeah I lost my I, oh the feelings were the same the feelings are the same and they and she certainly fits this list that's why I thought it was important to uh, say this list so and everything I more and more I read about narcissistic personality disorder the more I realize that this relative of mine had it and I'll get into a little bit of that so I was getting into lacks empathy they are unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others one of the things that she would tell she has a couple of kids since they were like two or three she would have them go up I would hear go tell her meaning me how much you hate her go up and tell her I hate you I hate you and um, actually her parents got whiff of it and her father called her and told her you know to knock it off this was wrong but she doesn't care who she hurts for Christmas I gave them presents because when we gather uh, and there's a lot of us when we gather for the Christmas is there's lots of kids and it, it was uncomfortable giving other kids presents and not giving her kids presents and also I thought it would, it would be a peace offering so for like two years I gave them presents even though they're saying that they hate me um I still gave them presents and I think they were about four and a half maybe five I gave them presents in the middle of unwrapping those presents she ripped them out of her hand she threw the presents at me and said my kids are going to hate you they'll always be better than you they're going to hate you you're nothing you'll never amount to anything and I said to her I said you're not hurting me if anything she's saving me money for Christmas <laughs> it can be pretty expensive with all the kids but anyway I didn't say that but um, I said you're not hurting me you're hurting your children she she said to me I do not care they're going to hate you and they'll always be better than you they will have everything they need they are going to hate you and I just kept saying you know you're not hurting me I just get and I said you're sad you know that's so sad you know so and people who um, were married to people who have narcissistic personality disorder um, the person with that disorder, the narc, will actually use the kids as weapons. They will try to turn the kids against the partner who's trying to divorce them. They'll even have false allegations of sexual abuse. And that's another type of abuse that men uh, can go through. Their, their wives, their narc wives, will accuse them of molesting their children and even... Um, get their children to say that they were abused so it, it's a pretty ugly situation they don't have feelings they don't have love on a deep enough level and again with the narc that was in my life um another story would be uh this is again there are so many stories um you know oh my god i i lose my train of thought i'm sorry i i I don't know if I have ADD. I don't have ADD uh, that I know of. But uh, but I remember one time um, I heard a bird. We had a pet bird. Or she had a pet bird. And I heard the bird uh, crying in pain. I was behind a closed door. I opened the door. And there she is standing outside the door. And she had this bird, this little bird, in her hand. And she was twisting its neck. And I had seen where she had pulled out some feathers. And she was twisting the neck. And the bird was screaming in pain. And she hold the bird up. And she say, you're responsible for this. This is your fault. This is another thing. They don't take responsibility for their behavior. She has no empathy, a compassion for this little little bird and the bird um and it ended up dying so they really do lack any kind of empathy and a deep sense of profound love and oh that was what i was going to say before i, I lost my a train of thought i remember we were sitting in, around a table and i don't know there was six to eight of us and she was saying she was married and she was saying she wanted children because her friends had children and she didn't think it was right that she had children she had tried they were trying to have children but it wasn't working i don't know what the story was she miscarried or she wasn't able to conceive or whatever i don't know what the story was so uh, she did go uh surrogo. but she said all my friends are having kids i want to have kids too and i said to her you shouldn't want kids because your friends are having kids you should want kids because you love them and she she got mad and her face looked like it was going to explode and uh, her husband said something to her I don't know what it was but the subject was quickly quickly 
changed. So um, she ended up having kids, and of course, she's bringing up the hate me. And they're in their preteens now. I can't get into too much of the abuse. I can't get into exactly who this person is because of her, because of her, um, because of her kids. I don't want to, to hurt them, so I'm just going to keep it as a, a relative. And um, I will say it's not my parents. I have wonderful parents. And her parents are wonderful too. Uh, it's definitely not a reflection of the way that she was brought up or her, her parents. I think there was a lot of guilt there. Sometimes I wonder. And she... Um, it, it isn't. This is a mental disorder that she was probably born with. And knowing her my whole life, I would say she was born with this completely independent of her of her parents. Um, she, yeah, so she doesn't even want kids because she loves them. She just wants them because it looks, again, it goes back to it looks good to people. That's what society says. You get married, you have kids. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, it makes her in her mind look good that she has kids and uh, it's just the wrong reason to have kids by my my by, by my standards so again she lack uh, knocks lack empathy uh, they are often envious of others or believe that others are envious of him or her one of the things that uh, the knock did was she would beat me up she would beat me up as a kid she was she was older and she would beat me up and she'd say, you're jealous of me because I'm prettier than you. And I never even thought she was pretty. I always thought she was miserable and snotty looking. There was nothing as a child um, that I thought was pretty about her. She was ugly inside and out. But I, and, but I was the one getting beat up because I was jealous of her in her mind because she was uh, prettier than me. And I even said to her, I don't even think you're pretty. There's nothing. And she's like, oh, people tell me I'm pretty. People uh, tell me how pretty I am. And I said, well, people tell me I'm pretty too. And, they, and she would say, they only tell you that because they feel sorry for you, how ugly you are. So they tell you that you're pretty. But I know what people say behind your back. And they talk about how ugly you are. So that's how a knock works. That's how their brain works. They can't, they have to be on top. So they're often very, very envious. In fact, that particular time, now that I'm thinking of it, that particular time when she was beating me up, uh, another cousin was telling me that I was pretty because I have blue eyes and she thought I was the prettiest one in the family. So that was why. And that was the person that she was saying that says behind my back that um, she was just jealous. Uh, she was just saying that I was pretty because I was so ugly she felt bad for me. So, and another thing, uh, reading uh, uh, again from that uh, website, regularly shows arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes. Yeah, very haughty. Oh my God, very, very haughty. And again, this information, uh, well, mostly comes from the Psych Central. I gave you some um, information that uh, I experienced as a kid uh, from this. And this is why this subject is so important to me. It needs to get out. People need to know. I thought uh, sh the mental abuse, I went through PSTD when uh, I had blocked out. I She caused me so much abuse. And again, I can't say exactly what because of her children. And I don't want to hurt her children. If she sees this video and she and she gets mad because I'm saying what I've said, even though it's just a tiny bit, and it's it's on her own guilt conscience. And that's what I say to you. Uh, if if you're watching the knock, if you're feeling angry at me, that's because it, you know I'm talking. I'm talking about you. But I had blocked out like I had blocked out my memories as a kid, up to when I was 16. I didn't have any any memories. I had maybe six or seven memories, maybe 10 at the most. And that stuff had to bubble up and bubble up and bubble up all these memories. And when anybody who's been through PSTD, when it, those memories bubble up, you go through it's so much pain that you can't deal with it. You're, it's so big, your brain can't even process what's going on. So you repress it. And then when you become an adult, get in relationships with guys, 
um, memories would stop bubbling up and I had to deal with it. And it's just like dealing with it from when I was a kid. If I had dealed with it from when I was a kid, all the pain, the crying, I was dysfunctional. I was uh, dysfunctional in relationships. I feel bad for the men. I was so fortunate. I had wonderful guys in my life. I had great female friends in my life. And because of my issues, because I started remembering that uh, what was happening, it kind of distorted my brain a little bit. The pain kind of um, distorted my sense of reality. So I had to I had well at first I couldn't deny because of what I was feeling because because then that would be suppression and what you don't deal with somewhere in the future you have to deal with it's going to come up some way or another deal with and that's a lesson deal with your memories but um but yeah I was dysfunctional I hurt people and if you're watching you know who you are and I am so sincerely sorry for ever hurting um anybody I was very very distraught and uh, very confused and very lost when you start remembering things from your past that you didn't even know exist you start questioning your sanity and um, it was a very painful time to get through so I what I had to do was I had to write I literally was so much junk in my past and this is where enlightenment now comes in that I teach you let go of who you were taught to be to become who you are and what I had to do was I had to say okay this isn't working I'm hurting people I'm driving myself crazy um I was trying to suppress the memories I I knew I couldn't so I would just deal deal with that and what I did was I said, this isn't working. This isn't working. This isn't who I want to be. So I wrote myself a different story. I actually got out paper, uh, paper like this. I don't have my book with me. I think I threw it away. And I wrote out, who am I? Who, who am I? If I take away my past, everything that ever happened to me, everything that I ever taught, what, that I was taught to be, who am I? And the answer that came back to me was, I am love. So I built my, I built a new story and the, the story was on love. And that's when I got out this pa a paper and what I did was magazine um, places of how I wanted to be, um, healthy friendships, things that I wanted to do. I wrote myself a whole new story. I even meditate it and it's called reframing and I would reframe, meditate and reframe my past the way I wanted that was it that was where I was not abused from my sister and she abused me emotionally and, and physically and mentally and gaslight like crazy. So I reinvented my life and what happened was when I started doing that, I was able to get to a place where, well, what would love do? That's what I always asked myself, what would love do? And I built my life off of that love and eventually what happened, distance would happen between my past and my present and who I am and I'm totally a totally completely different person right now people who knew me back then if they see me they will even comment there's something different about you you're so different and I'd be like yeah you know I've changed so uh anyway that's why um I chose narcissistic personality um to do I thought it was an important subject I know there's a lot of people who uh, go through this. I really want to do it for men so they can come out. It's okay. You're not weak if you're being accused of, of, of abuse. If your girlfriend is beating you up, you know, it, it, it's, it's okay. It's not okay, of course, but it's okay to come forward. So, so that's my story. There you have it in a nutshell. I'm just closing this app. Um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if you have any questions, if you have stories of your own, I would love to hear. I would love to hear about it. Um, if you like this video, please comment. Uh, oh, if you have any questions, please please comment below. If you like this video, please, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel. And the next video I will be doing will be with Leslie and she'll have her story and how she survived and the lessons that she learned and uh, 
that's it for now. May, oh, excuse the brace. I have uh, tendonitis. I had tendonitis in both arms, but this one's doing good, my left arm. And uh, so may you live long and prosperous. Have a great, wonderful day. I hope uh, you, you tune in next time. Thank you so much. Namaste. Bye now. Have a great, wonderful day.